Welcome to Best Habits, episode number 58. Today we're gonna talk about the Rolling Stones and their original bass player, Bill Wyman. The Rolling Stones, arguably the most, actually, let's forget the arguably, the biggest rock band of all time. Active for six decades, they are the most popular and enduring band of the rock era. In the early 1960s, they pioneered a heavy driven sound that came to define hard rock. And since then, they managed to stay relevant through pretty much every age of rock, surviving every fashion, 25 studio albums, endless tours, and a life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. After all, they represent the most perfect example of a rock band. Mick Jagger, the quintessential frontman, Keith Richards, the mysterious guitar player with alcohol and drug problems, Ronnie Wood, the skilled musician, Charlie Watts, the heroic yet quaint archetype of the rock drummer, and no bass player. But it wasn't always like that. Back at the beginning, the Rolling Stones were a nice five-piece band, consisting beside Jagger, Richards and Watts of guitar player Brian Jones and bassist Bill Wyman. No Trouble describes Wyman's bass playing and innate primal energy as the secret sauce that held the Rolling Stones' rhythm section together. Unlike many bassists would deliver a deliberate groove, Wyman provided reactionary rot riding riffs that stayed beneath the surface while locking in with drummer Charlie Watts. Very much the anti-McCartney, Bill was never interested in being melodic, and all his focus was not being functional to the song. Even something as simple as the bass line on Satisfaction reveals this mindset. If you skip through the track, you'll hear that the drums and the guitar keep a steady rhythm for the whole song. It's the bass that underlines the different sections. First leaning on the fourth below during the verses, Then keeping root on the pre-chorus And then this little walking bass line that doubles the guitar riff on the chorus If the Rolling Stones are the foundation of rock Bill Wyman is the foundation of the foundation of rock. So what are the main points of his style? First of all, play ahead of the beat. In their early years, the Rolling Stones were many things. Tight wasn't one of them. Don't get me wrong, they sounded great live, but if you pay close attention, you'll realize that the musicians weren't really in sync with each other. This is due mainly to one factor. Unlike many bands where the drummer sets the pace and acts as the time setter for a song, in the Rolling Stones that role is filled by guitar player Keith Richards. Both Wyman and Ronnie Wood have said that the Stones do not follow Charlie Watts, but rather follow Richards, as there is no way of not following him. According to Wyman, Charlie was always behind the beat because he was listening to Keith, and Bill was ahead of Charlie because he was anticipating Keith. It might sound like a mess, and it is in a way, but somehow it all worked out, creating a pretty one-of-a-kind rhythm machine. Number 2. Use a fretless bass Though you don't really see Wyman playing a fretless bass on stage with the Stones, and you don't hear it on the albums either, because it's buried in the mix, apparently that's what he used to record the bulk of their early albums. That's quite a thing, especially since Bill is credited to have invented the fretless bass. In 1961, even before he joined the Rolling Stones, Bill converted a used UK-built Dallas tuxedo bass by removing the frets and filling in the slots with wood putty. It was the first fretless bass ever made. Bill didn't know that at the time, but it predated fretless basses by about 5 or 6 years. Number 3. The Wayman Box from a melodic standpoint, there's not much to say about Bill Wyman. He was a blues player and a root guy, and generally didn't move much from it. Like everybody else, he had a little favorite box, which is a little three-note chromatic scale that can be descending... ...or ascending. Other 
than that, it's quite common the use of root and fifth pattern, which was a must do in the 60s. Billy, however, seems to prefer the fourth below version, which is just the fifth one octave lower. Better Move On features a power chord arpeggio, oddly enough not played in power chord position, but rather up and down the neck. Number 4 Funky Chops On Miss You, Bill comes up with some cool funky chops, proving to be a versatile and complete player. The type of bass line was new in rock music for the time. According to Bill, every band in the world copied it the following year, including Rod Stewart. <music> Harlem Shuffle also showcases some good funky vibes provided by Bill, with the bass carrying the groove of the song. Rock in a Hard Place has a pretty cool bass line in the verse. Which also defines the harmony in the chorus, as guitars keep the same two chords all the time, but Wyman changes things around by playing or not playing. Despite the bass having a marginal role in the music of the Rolling Stones, Bill still manages to come up with some cool bass lines every now and then. On Under My Thumb, the bass is the actual hook of the song. On Star Me Up, Wayman's sparse playing is what brings the dynamic in the intro and the verse. And when the bass comes in full force in the chorus, it sounds really epic. On Beast of Burden, Wyman's melodic space really pushes the verse, enhances Jagger's vocal line. Undercover of the Night is also worth mentioning, a very obscure track with a very weird harmony. To me, the song sounds in the key of F major, but the intro bass line plays the weird E flat and F sharp lick that also keeps coming back during the verse, bringing in a strange dissonance. Quite interesting, to be honest. Throughout his third year tenure with Stones, Wyman teamed up with drummer Charlie Watts to form one of Rock's most solid rhythm sections. And let me tell you, that was not an easy job. According to Bill, the earlier recording sessions were complete chaos. First of all, he wasn't even granted to play bass on every song. Keith Richards did some bass, Ronnie Wood did some bass, and even Mick Jagger did some bass. It had more to do with who was in the studio at the moment of inspiration while recording, so it wasn't unusual for Wyman to come in the studio and find out that songs were already being recorded without the actual bass player on bass. Not only, the bass was often sunk way deep in the mix, Bill didn't get involved in the mixing process and used to get fairly disappointed when he couldn't well hear his bass. The Rolling Stones were pretty much a two-man operation, and according to Wyman, he didn't get some writing credits even when he was involved in the actual writing. Songs were created in the studio, Keith would come up with a riff, and over the course of a week, the band would come up with a song. Then Mick would write the lyrics, and it would come out in an album credited as Jagger Richards. That would happen all the time. On top, even playing credits were often messed up, even on the album sleeve, and according to Bill, he used to get credits on songs he didn't play on, and vice versa. It was a complete mess, and to this day, not even the band members are 100% sure of who played where. So please excuse me if I made any mistake. Bill Wyman left the Rolling Stones in January 1993 to escape the pressure of being a rock star and pursue a more stable life. He also stated that when he left, the big money wasn't there yet. The most popular rock band of all time 
30 years in and the big money wasn't there yet. You may want to keep that in mind if you're thinking about starting a band. Wyman was replaced by session musician Daryl Jones, which continues to work with the band to this day, without being acknowledged as an official member even after 30 years. The first time Jones rehearsed with the band, he famously asked Keith, Hey man, did you play bass on this song? Yep, said Keith. So what's the bass line? asked Jones. I don't know man, you're the bass player, you tell me what the bass line is. And that pretty much sums it up. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram for more.